My name is Benjamin Fulford. Uh, I used to be the Asia Pacific Bureau Chief for Forbes magazine. Uh, then the Japanese security police informed me about a very nasty secret government that rules much of the West. Once I found out these people existed, I knew they had to be overthrown. Uh, an ancient secret society has offered to help. They have a membership of 6 million, including 1.8 million Asian gangsters. Their other members are highly intelligent individuals, located throughout the highest levels of Asian society in Japan, China, Vietnam, and of course in all the Asian communities worldwide. They have united because they were able to show and confirm that SARS was a bioweapon aimed at killing Asians. People do not like being killed. And therefore, a fundamental change has happened in the world, which has still not made it to the surface in the corporate news. But in the intelligence world, people know that things will never be the same again. My involvement with the secret government started this spring when I interviewed former finance minister Heizo Takenaka. Dragons dead. I confronted him with evidence that he had sold out the Japanese financial system to a group of financial companies controlled by David Rockefeller and the Rothschilds. The very next day I got an email from someone who said he was introduced by Mr. Takenaka and he wanted to meet me to meet somebody. The person I met gave me this Freemason badge and he said to me that he was a professional assassin and that I could either stop exposing people oh no he said I could either continue exposing people and die at the age of 46 or I could become basically finance minister of Japan now I have all this proof on tape and video uh, <clears throat> this is apparently what happens to a lot of people on this planet they get to a certain level when they're told either you join us or you die and most of them join them and that way they get the elite in their pocket and that's the secret of their control in my case I would have probably had to do that too although once I realized I had met an honest genuine high-level Freemason who told me there were 13 levels of Freemason above the 33rd degree that these people were God. There was no God, they were God. So I asked them about their plans to kill people and they said, yes, there are too many people on the planet. We need to get rid of, of several billion. And war doesn't seem to work, so we're going to use disease and starvation. Now, I don't know about you, but I couldn't live with something like that. And my first thought was I'll have to pretend to join them and try to, you know, throw them over from the inside. And I suspect a lot of the people inside those groups have the same feeling. They hate being there, but they're scared. But they'd love it if these guys were overthrown. So you got to remember, not everybody in the secret government is evil. In fact, I'd be willing to bet a majority actually want to do good things for the planet, but they're scared. My the very next day after I got this threat and offer of a bribe from the ninja, well, the guy who described himself as a ninja, a Chinese secret society contacted me. It's actually an Asian secret society. It's not Chinese. It com it's Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese. It's all of Asia. Uh, and they offered me protection. Now, this is their booklet. One of them. This is the booklet of the other. Now, people who know will know this is real. They have six million members, more actually, including 1.8 million gangsters and a lot of very intellectual people. They can mobilize all public opinion in Asia. 
So, with their protection, I continued exposing David Rockefeller. And earlier this year, I issued an ultimatum on Rents.com. The answer to the ultimatum was that the self-described assassin told me there would be an earthquake in Niigata Prefecture, Japan. And two days later, there were, on two consecutive days, earthquakes right at the, on top of Japan's largest nuclear power plant. And, I'll try to present this to people in the future, there was video taken of a ball of plasma in the atmosphere above Niigata on that day. His answer was to hit a nuclear power plant with an earthquake machine and kill innocent people. Now I said, why on earth would I not then retaliate? Well, that would be playing into his strong hand, now wouldn't it? He controls a lot of violence, a lot of instruments of death. The people who are behind him, these uh, Sabbatean sects of Satanists, uh, would love to trigger World War III. And I'm not going to give them that, that excuse. So instead, the Chinese societies and the Asian countries, you may have noticed, have started dumping dollars, big time. And they've stopped going to G8 meetings in Davos. And you'll also notice that their submarines, the Chinese submarines, have popped up right behind U.S. aircraft carriers in the middle of military exercises. What that means is that every single U.S. aircraft carrier is a useless sitting duck. The entire U.S. Navy is useless, okay? That's a fact. Secondly, all their satellites are useless, okay? And that's just the beginning. The screws will get tighter and tighter. The United States economy depends on Asian money. They need to borrow $850 billion a year just to keep going. And they're not, the Asians are tired of paying for a country that does nothing but attack people and create excuses for war. A lot of people are wondering why a picture of me smiling beside David Rockefeller appeared on the internet. And they're saying, how did I get to meet him? Well, he was here in Japan on what was supposed to be a top secret visit. However, if he's in Japan, he's on my turf. And it was pretty naive of him to think I wouldn't know he was here and I wouldn't know where he was. Now, I could have had him brought to me all tied up with a vibrator up his ass, just like happened to that reporter for the Yomiuri newspaper in April when you got too close to these people. But I don't think torture is a very polite way of talking to people, and nor is it very productive. Uh, friendly conversation is always the best. Now, the interview may be a little bit disappointing in the sense that a guy like that is not going to go and just tell you, oh yes, I'm head of the secret government and I sacrifice children and... Uh, I'm planning, you know, to turn everybody into sheep. It's just not going to happen. You have to get, look for subtle signals. It's the rules of the game. I was a corporate journalist for 20 years. And I know that if you just ask those questions, you'll, they'll shut down the interview somewhere. So if I said, why did you spread HIV and uh, why did you create SARS? He would say, to his bodyguard, gets this Fruit Loop out of the room. That's how it works. So I had to operate within his matrix. And I hate going there. I hate that place. But I had to pretend I was a friendly journalist. And I had to sneak in the stuff I wanted to ask. Because, unfortunately, you know, it would have been great if he could really hit him with this stuff. But it wasn't that circumstance. He was accompanied by the president or chairman of a fancy PR company. And a guy who looked like a uh, heavy-duty Mossad type who could probably kill me in three seconds if it ever came to that. I came with a cameraman, and myself. And now, you may wonder, when you look at this interview, why I was not more aggressive. The reason is simple.